to see if you are allowed to smile. And welcome. My name is Paul Brighton, aka Seafood Boggy. Before we get onto the show, I just want to say a few little words, a little bit of respect for two two things. Obviously, yesterday in uh, West Westminster in London, <coughs> England, there was there was an incident, tragic incident, where um, there were a few people who were injured um, and a few people also died. So I I have friends in the police and. Um, my brother is, is actually a policeman, and I just want to send love and respect to everybody who's hurting right now, and my thoughts are with you. Also, just before we start, uh, a friend of mine, uh, a friend, a student, a patient, and a fan of the show, uh, Jules, uh, tragically died uh, last week. So, um, I again, for her friends and family, I want to send love and respect, especially her son. And she'll always be remembered and never forgotten. After that thought, I'd like to welcome you to the show. And the show is The Way of Conscious Mindfulness, a weekly podcast and YouTube show discussing spirituality and science, blending health and well-being with body mind and spirit with a taoist twist Tao means the way the path the balance now we're not the normal show and you know we have our own open way of doing things now each week we we discuss a topic or uh, have a guest now this week is a topic now we'll get back to that in a second our aim for the show is to have an open discussion to help all find new skills and techniques and to help you personally balance your Tao, your way, your path. Now, to help me on this mighty quest, I always have some fellow co-hosts. Now, one is MIA at the moment, the uh, wonderful Michelle Infinity, but I, I, she is, so, she does say that she will be here at some point, so she just and magically appear on your screens, I think. But there are two here already to get this kicked off. So we have, as always, the ever sturdy, the ever mysterious, the ever so good at questions, Chris Clutton, aka The Questioner. Good evening, Chris. How are you doing? Good evening. Uh, very well, thank you. Cool, cool. Okay, and then we have a new co-host tonight. <laughs> We have the um, very lovely um, Sharon. Oh, tell me if I got your name wrong. Sud 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 Sudabi. Sudabi. Yes, yeah, English Sudabi. name. Sudabi. Yeah. Sudabi. Okay. <laughs> I, I actually now. Yeah, I have heard of it. Now you think of it. Oh well. Um, <laughs> right. And now she's. We will talk about her uh, things she does maybe later, but also she does. She will appear as a guest in the near future. Um, she is an intuitive healer, a reader, and she's also the founder of Water Alchemy. Now, as always, I give everybody nicknames. That's a buggy thing. Um, and her nickname is Sifu Shui, which means uh, mentor or muse of water. So, good evening. Good evening, Shui. Or good evening, Sharon. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm really well, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Just enjoying the week. <laughs> it's been windy and rainy in London. It is. I'm here as well. So it is. It is. Right. <laughs> so let's get on with the show. So the show this week is the way of the secrets and the law of attraction. So you know what? Oh, what are these things? What is this? Well, the secret was a book that was written by Rhonda Byme. Is it Byme? Byme. I was. Oh, and um, so it was a book written by Wanda, and it was written about 2006, I think it was. And it is, in essence, it is a book about the law of attraction. Now, I know that Sharon knows quite a bit about this, so I'm actually going to get her. <laughs> well, now I've put her on the spotlight. So I'm sorry. I thought Chris was going to get in there before me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want me. I don't want Chris to ask you a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it will reach into your soul and open you up, won't it, Chris? It's going to be a, a good cop, bad cop thing going on here. <laughs> uh, I'm crazy cop. 
I, 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 well, yeah. actually, I'm not too sure what cop I am or what I would be, even if I was one. So anyway, <laughs> so Sharon, for, oh, for your words, your point of view, what is the secret, firstly? So the secrets, the book that came out, it was probably released, probably, I think it was about eight years ago now. Um, and that was explaining the law of attraction um, by yet yeah, the author that you said, Rhonda Bryant. Um, I actually, at the time it was released, I was temping in Waterstones bookstore. And we, I remember having loads of those secret books behind us at the till. And, you know, it was really popular. People just come in and say the name of the book. And you just give it to them across the till. So there was a bit of a, can I have the secret kind of <laughs> thing going on. And so, yeah, it was a cool place to be working at Waterstones during that time. It was, you know, quite memorable. Um, but, I mean, I read The Secret and I watched the video and the DVD that came out. And, you know, the interviews were amazing. And I got to know who Bob Proctor was, who's one of my um, heroes or idols. Um, but I think, yeah, after reading it, um, yeah, there were some things that just didn't feel quite right. I mean, it was, it focused a lot mentally, you know, on the law of attraction. If people don't know who's tuning in is obviously a focusing on, um, setting an intention or setting something that you want out there to the universe and for it to attract back into your life. We call it manifestation. Um, and the secret really focused on your thoughts. You know, I would, the, the interviewees and the case studies they showed, a lot of people were saying, you know, they were thinking these thoughts and it was coming back to them. And, um, you know, all true, definitely. But I always felt there was something missing so um, after discovering the secret, I actually discovered Abraham Hicks, Hicks's work, um, which were actually the original people who were publishing material on the law of attraction. And so what they highlighted was not just the mental thoughts that you think to, that you set an attention or that you think of the things you want, the things you desire, that's really what setting an intention is, your thinking of what you desire and what you want. Um, they, they did highlight that um, manifestation and the law of attraction does work on an emotional frequency. So that they did highlight in their work what I felt the secret was missing, which was tapping into that emotional, um, that emotional vibration, you know, your emotional body and you know actually visualizing what you want so you can access that feeling um, and by doing so lining the vibrational frequency with that which which you want um, and then that would actually create what you want to come into your reality quite quickly so and that was really profound for me because a lot of my work is i'm an emotional intuitive um, the emotional world is definitely where I am with my work, whether it's readings or healings or workshops. So yeah, very big on heart consciousness. So for me, that was hitting the nail on the head. So anybody watching, if you've read The Secret, then definitely read up on Abraham Hicks's work. They're so big now. I mean, they're all over YouTube and you know, listening to them is so inspiring. It's, it's amazing. So. Mm. Right, before I, oh, I can hear myself on the speaker. Somebody turn down their uh, audio. Um, <coughs> before I uh, ask a question, uh, um, I just want to also add, uh, Bob Proctor is, just making sure it's not me, uh, Bob Proctor is also, he was actually on the film The Secret. He was one of the guys. Now, he talks a lot about, the, yeah, there, there are fundamental keys that help. Uh, Joe, um, name um because i've got a friend called vitelli vitel i think it's vitel joe vitel uh yeah. is he's another guy now he practices something that we'll talk about later called um with a hawaiian name is ho apono apono o uh and it comes from there was actually a japanese version and a chinese version uh in 
in the east they're just known as clearing techniques now these are very really good for enhancing the secret and what's very very important Taoistically, i was um told on the Taoist side is uh qi jing and chen qi is physical vitality uh jing is emotional vitality and shen is spiritual vitality again we can talk about them how they work with the with the law of attraction we can talk about later but firstly dick dear questioner do you have any any questions or or anything you want to add for now it's sort of a question answer question so <laughs> the law of attraction is a principle of desiring something by therefore in desiring it you then bring it into your life or is it just thinking about something will bring it into your life right yes this, sorry no. <laughs> so the, the secret highlighted thinking and also visualizing using your imagination to as you're thinking of what you want it could be for example i never forget on the movie they had a guy who always was looking for a free parking space so he would think before he's about to park his car that he'd won a free parking space in a car park that was notoriously busy but he would also visualize it he would probably do this maybe 20 minutes or 15 minutes before and he would always find a perfect spot i mean using that as a very simplistic example um but yeah the, the secret very much highlighted that mental thoughts and also your imagination with visualizing um, that which you want and and for it to come to you so they highlighted to start small and then you see the case studies building up from people attracting car parking spaces at will to going on to people that actually attracted you know, manifesting large amounts of money or opportunities book deals and so forth so so, so it is possible it is possible to attract money in this this way then i mean if yeah. i visualize a stack of i don't know a million pounds <laughs> is, is it going to turn up in the morning you know right well, one thing I want to add, uh, to the, to the that's secret. a massive question well, well i've seen it happen and it is possible everything is possible but let's add a little bit of science we had someone on facebook earlier i think yeah. with you paul triggering and it, he said exactly that none of you lot are millionaires <laughs> and so yeah good question chris <laughs> well, well okay well my my question is well well i'll we'll ask the little box i want something else to add as well but do you want to be a millionaire? Because there's a lot that goes on. I used to do close protection. I looked after millionaires. There was very few I know that were happy millionaires, um, unless they actually had a reason for being it. Um, so, so you know, yeah, you can manifest. But let's just go back one second. Is we're talking about law that the Lord, the book, the secret, and all the attraction. Yeah. There was evidence before, way before then, 1904, somebody can correct me if they know it better than me, I think 1904, they did experiments with, with uh, quantum physics, they did experiments with the, the atomic structure of the universe, and the scientists did these, now Chris will probably be doing his eyebrow thing, because I have talked about this before, but it is actually important for the show, so... The, the, the scientists did their experiments about the atomic structure. They split the atom, basically. It started off ba back in the 1900s. Everybody thinks it's a lot, lot, lot later than that. But in the, so uh, about 1904, I think they started. Now, what they were doing, the, that you'd have several, several scientists doing the same experiment. And they all said, right, well, when I split, when I do this, this is going to happen. A is going to happen. Another one said B is going to happen. Another one said C is going to happen, and so on and so forth. All five scientists went off and did their experiment, came back with with the answer that they said was going to happen. When I do this, fairies are going to appear. When no, when I do this, bananas are going to appear. When I do this, sugar lumps are going to appear. And all of them got it right. Which was hold up, how can that be? How can that work? How can that be correct? So they went off and did each other's experiment. 
how they they said they were going to do it and they got the, the results that they said they were going to get they got and this was right at the very beginning of science right at the very beginning of case studies and the whole reason we have blind case studies which is which is the the, the technical name for case studies which a blind case study is i Michelle comes up with an idea and she gives it to me to to go off and, and do a case study on it. I then find Chris, who has no idea what we're talking about, and get him to do um, an experiment which he will not, not know what the answer is to. And then I get that answer and I give it back to, to, to Sharon, to Shui. So the whole idea is totally blind case studies is that nobody else knows what's going on within the experiment. Why? Because what they found in science, what they found in science for those lovely haters is that the observer affects the experiment. The observer affects the experiment, meaning what you focus on from, from a minute uh, topic or minute uh, point to a massive point affects the reality that your reality is affected by you the law of attraction what you focus on grows you are the observer and you affect your reality so we talk about the the, the book the the book the secret as oh you know it's oh it's only seven years years old there is it goes all the way back to, at least scientifically in the West, it goes back to the 1900s where they started to see the problem or the, in the world of, of the quantum is that the observer consciousness affects other con uh, affects reality. <laughs> and even more trippy was they were finding that the particles themselves seemed to have a form of consciousness. That could be for another show another time. But the point is, is that the observer, you, affects your reality. You do it all the time. Whether you realise it or not, you do it all the time. How many times have you known somebody who says, oh, you know, wakes up in the morning with a sore head. Oh, it's going to be a really bad day. And funny enough, it continues getting worse. How many people you wake up feeling really happy, really good, and the day just keeps getting better? you affect your own reality does that sort of answer your question chris or add to it uh well you kind of diverted onto your own topic but yes uh <laughs> how did i divert onto my own topic well we were talking about manifesting money and then suddenly this all came out it's like okay well yeah yeah, yeah but right well the point is if science is saying what you focus on grows that that the observer affects the reality if you're focusing on i want a, a pile of money within the, within psychology itself is that you will start seeing more opportunities to earn money if you say i want a red sports car you'll start seeing more red sports cars more red sports cars didn't actually pop up they were already there it's just psycho in psychology you weren't as observant to see them you open up your realms you open up your consciousness you expand your perspective your perception you expand your reality so the opportunities to earn that money will actually enhance because you're saying i want more money and the chi jing shen of it is if you think of the idea you love the idea and you go and do the idea you'll fuel the idea but okay. hang on yeah so let's assume so, that I, I have attracted... Sorry, do you want to say something? Um, no, you. I can say something after you, because um, yeah, I've got something that maybe could tie it all together. Okay. So <laughs> let's say I, I've attracted something that I've desired. I don't know. Small rubber duck, a million pounds, <laughs> whichever million it is. Pounds. I love right. the scale there. A million pound rubber duck. A million pound rubber duck. <laughs> the golden, the ultimate golden rubber duck. So I now have the ultimate golden rubber duck in my hand. That doesn't swim in the bath. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But how, how that got there? I mean, you know, to, in order for that to get there, something tragic might have had to happen in my life to get that object there. So just because we desire something doesn't mean potentially we control the outcomes that get the, that object or 
thing, yeah. whatever you want to say, into our lives. So is it right to focus on something, not knowing the consequences of summoning that object? But isn't there consequences? I think, all I think Chris's questions are really spot on. I, yeah, I that's think... why it's called the question. That's why it's called the question. <laughs> I, th I think you ask questions that a lot of people out there, you know, are they're on this that wavelength and they're saying, hey, you know, everyone's talking about the law of attraction, everyone's talking about manifesting, um, manifest a million pounds and prove it to me, that kind of thing. However, what I would add between your question and, and what also what Paul is saying about the observer and um having um, an effect on your reality. Um, one of the things I think when we're talking about manifestation and the law of attraction is we've you've gone from the first step of thinking and visualizing and also aligning your emotions. Don't forget the feelings, guys. So it's, you know, opening your heart and aligning your emotional vibration to the, your desire, your thoughts, the visualization of that what you want um, we and to basically having it in your physical reality um, what we missed is in between is there is a law called the law of exchange so the law of exchange it, um, it works as though for every action as a reaction and also you, um, money for a million pounds is a lot of energy yeah the yin and the yang um thanks paul <laughs> um my, yeah a million pounds is a lot of energy i mean money is an energetic um it's a currency um a lot of people become emotional about money especially when you talk about whether you can manifest a million pounds or attract a million pounds into your life because money is an emotional um energy it's connected to our emotions because it affects the way we live it, it has a knock-on effect on our livelihood and our lifestyle in the physical world. Um, however, I think what's really interesting is that although money is really connected to our emotions, it's really important to actually tap in to those emotions. I mean, if you actually think, right, I want a million pounds, okay, how can I manifest that into my life? But you don't actually feel one, it will be possible for you to attract or manifest a million pounds into your life, or you don't feel that you're going to be able to manage the responsibility of a million pounds, because obviously, as Paul highlighted, money is a responsibility. He knows millionaires that are not happy. Why? Because money is a responsibility. Where are you going to put it? Where are you going to invest it? There's, there's so much. I mean, it's, it's, it's energy, right? That's a big kind of weight with you and also i find that a lot of money can be very ungrounding it can really unground people um and this is why a lot of people can become unhappy they can lose touch with themselves because it's an energy that can just it's one big wave i mean i i i have yet to manifest a million pounds and i'm not a millionaire but i have i have seen enough case studies and interviews to really actually think yeah you need to be really grounded and you need to if you want to attract up to a million pounds in your life or more or whatever you want you need to appreciate the process and the journey that you're going to take for that to come into your life um you know i do work and see a lot of entrepreneurs um a lot of them it's usually a good five between five to seven years a lot of people say it's the six year rule that takes from conception of your idea, of your business idea that you actually love to do, that you want to do, through to being really successful at it, where you're creating multiple um, thousand pounds of money through that idea. It takes between, some say five years, some say six, some say seven. I'd say, you know, it's a good six years, six or seven years. Bill Gates, number one millionaire in the world, he worked six days a week, and he created Microsoft in six years. Six days a week, non-stop, one day off. Um, he must have been working around the clock. But, yeah, I mean, it's possible. So I think coming back to your question, Chris, about manifesting, say, a rubber duck, which is quite small, <laughs> which would be a manifesting game. 
see if that jumps out of you in a shop somewhere. But to actually manifest a million pounds, I would take that question quite seriously because there are people out there, especially tuning in, who may feel really strongly about that. And I would say that when you're, if you're focusing on that type of money, then bring into fact the law of exchange. What are you willing to exchange in for that? So how much work are you willing to put in that to manifest? I mean, yeah, okay, so you want to you want to attract a million pounds? What happens if all the doors in your life open and all of these opportunities flood in for you to create a million pounds? Are you ready for that? Are you grounded? Have you got your book ready if it's going to be a book deal? Have you got, you know, yourself ready to sort of be firing for syllogists? Because that is the law of exchange. The law of exchange, as you manifest and attract that which you want, will put you in a situation where you are given to receive in balance. You will be given putting the effort in to be able to generate and receive that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say you would, unless some people have won the lottery, um, I think it's down to the universe how that type of money comes to you. Um, I believe everyone has a soul path, and I believe that when people do manifest money, it comes to them in the way that is in alignment with the lessons and challenges they have in their life that are set out in their soul path. So, yeah. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> a bit deep. <laughs> Did I do a no. call on you, Chris? <laughs> Did I go off oh. there? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Chris, Chris pauses. There's always a pause before Chris answers. Okay. Just, just so you're aware that, you know, it is the sign of the questioner. There's this long pause and then there's the answer. Just like the question, question mark itself. There is a but, void the space. But just, just quickly... What, what Paul was saying about The Observer, I mean, there's a really good movie that a lot of people I know sneakily watched and when we gave the DVD out to all our friends. I think it's called Down the Rabbit Hole. Um, what I'll do, I'll look it up online and I'll put it on your YouTube channel if anyone's tuning in wants to see that movie. It must be on YouTube somewhere for free now but that movie was a short kind of documentary and it highlighted that um the observer and what you look at um it really does have an effect in your reality and what it opens you up to is that you create your own reality um the point that they were making is that if you stare at something and you concentrate on it so much and you're like i want to make this million pounds i want to attract it and you're just completely every day focused on it you're staring at something that you're actually by giving your attention to it as an observer and as someone putting all that energy that's quite forceful onto what you want you're kind of blocking yourself from the universe creating its own synchronicities in your life its own opportunities to give that to you um so that that movie was a really good one to watch so what i would say is that you know, tap into your heart, get in alignment emotionally and mentally, you know, for what you want to attract, whether that's money, whether that's opportunities, a book deal, a business that you love, um, meeting the right contacts that are going to help you with your work, meeting the right customers even, that, that's a really key one. Um, you know, if you know who your target audience is, then you, know, you want to meet those kind of people that you're going to be relevant to. Um, but I would say that a lot of what a lot of people may miss is the fact that you can ask what you want for the universe. You can ask your heart's desires or any ideas, but you do have to let go of the expectation. Um, it's the expectation and the control that you have of the final outcome that blocks anything that you're manifesting through law of attraction coming to you in your life because you're looking up for it and it, it just slows everything down and it can freeze things as Paul was saying. So, so you have to desire why, this thing and forget about it at the same time. Yeah. Well, well, it, it, it's why Gates, which is why Bill Gates did six days a week, not seven. 
He's a madman. He could have easily worked every day, but you yes, have to rest. Yes, one day to let it all go. <laughs> yeah. well, 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 you know, I was just joking about the question mark on the spot, you know, the dot with the question mark. He had the, the pause. You know, you are an example, Chris. It is that poor, you need to pause. You need to think. You know, you need that time to let things absorb. And that's the whole point. You know, the, the funny thing is, I used to actually, I did a period of time, uh, about four years, I worked for Camelots, which was uh, the lot lottery people. Yeah, the lottery. Good old Camelots. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I did, I, so, I was subcontracted work for their staff and did Qigong. So energy exercises. I did oh, Qigong for their staff because... Qigong is very good for uh, improving productivity and reducing absenteeism, which is one of the big things, in, in especially in the East and, and in America, why they do it. Now, what also happened, they actually started giving my name out, and the, there was, because they've got, I don't know if a lot of people know, but with Camelots, they actually have a psychiatrist uh, and a couple of advisors for winners. So when you when you win, you're not just given the million pounds and kicked out the door. They actually have a team that will look after you because for Camelot, it's a business. They don't want is who who in six months or 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 a year, you know, I lose it all and, and are depressed and happy. And you get people who say that. You get people who say that. Oh, it's the worst thing that happened to me, winning a million pounds. So they have people that actually help them balance that to help that help them you know you know get your head around this big thing so it's this thing that yeah if it suddenly happens you know there is nothing technically there's nothing probability wise there is as much chance as something happening out of the blue that gives you what you want as there is of you having to work m many years to get it so the whole you've put into your mindset that six six seven year uh mindset of it's going to take this long but when you focus and relax focus and relax and when you love when you have passion for something which is the jing when you're actively doing stuff for it which is the chi and when you're thinking of new ideas which is the shen um when you're doing all that that's you know that keeps that idea alive and that allows the idea to grow but also that takes fuel and hence in in qigong and in tai chi we there are exercises that refuel your physical vitality qi your emotional vitality jing and your spiritual vitality or inspirational vitality shen so the another like, secret to the secret to the secret is qigong and tai chi builds up and, and was we we was teaching that um, for Camelot, we were teaching, I taught some millionaires qigongs and exercises just to give them the ability to calm down and focus and not to get carried away too much in the moment. And I used to do that with, with like say, when in the close protection, that was part of my teacher. I wasn't just close protection officer. I actually did massage and healing for clients as well. And that's the, bit, you know, is that biggest yeah. thing of being yeah. grounded. You know, we're a four part being so it's brilliant that you highlight that because we're we've got a mental body we've got an emotional body we've got a physical body and we've got a spiritual body and so a lot of people see our, ourselves as the physical and the mental because we talk through our ideas and we can see each other physically um people forget you've got you're a four part being you, you're you're not everything squashed into one yeah so mm. the four Elements, yeah, good one, Paul. <laughs> so what was it's all about balance. <laughs> Sorry, uh, right, elements? Chris, go. I've got mental, <laughs> emotional, spirit, mind, and physical. Physical, right? Four. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Um. So, so let's say something controversial about the law of attraction and manifestation, because I really feel like Chris isn't sold on this and i think i think it's important we win him over because i you know we saw someone on facebook say something similar and just in case you've got any viewers out there that are thinking more along the lines of chris and not along the lines of sharon or paul um yeah i mean i think with the law of attraction you know on a slightly more serious note a lot of people think 
you know, they find it hard to wrap their heads around because they're like, well, this isn't this just wishful thinking. You know, you guys are going around and you're thinking of your heart's desires. But, you know, what about if it doesn't come up? You know, a lot of people do get stuck and get blocked in this. Um, what I found through manifesting and through working the law of attraction is, um, you know, if, if you don't believe it doesn't work, see, you know, we don't just attract what we want into our life or what we really feel from a heartfelt perspective. We actually attract our fears into our life. All the time. Um, all the time. So if you don't believe you're manifesting and attracting that which you're thinking, that which you're feeling, you are actually manifesting and attracting your fears every day. Mm. The, observer, mean, the observer affects the reality. That's what the science, yeah. the science said. And, yeah. and just for... It takes an observer and someone to really slow down in their life to actually go, okay, I'm attracting what I fear into my life. You know, if you can really become that observer and, you know, slow down, not rush around everywhere, actually spend some time with yourself. I, at the beginning of this year, I really started realizing the fears that I was attracting. And it can be the smallest thing. It can be the smallest thing. And I was like, wow, this fear has just shown me this illusion over my eyes. And when I look closely, it just disappeared. And the actual situation whether it was with a friend whether it was my partner whether it was with anything just disappeared and i just thought right a lot of people don't take that on board um you are attracting what you want but you're also attracting what you don't want into your life and um really the aim of the game is to attract more of what you want rather than what you don't want um so maybe if you don't believe in it so much Take a, I would say become obs observational in your life. Take notes on on what's coming into your life, and was that something com coming from a fear based place? Was it something you didn't really want? Because you'll have a list of all the things you don't want that you're experiencing, and then from that you can actually go right. Let's make a new list. What do I really want? Because either way, I'm going to attract it anyway. You know, it's it's going to come into your life. You are, you know, you are a vibrational being through your thoughts, through your emotions. Um, physically, if you do an exercise, that's generating um, vibrational vibrations as well. Um, and spiritually, you're a vibrational being spiritually as well. So, The universe, yeah. the, the ancient laws, um, Chris sort of knows about this, is um, there was, I've, I've been to China, I've been to Tibet, I've been to a few places, and uh, th there was one thing that all uh, the Tibetans, the, 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 the Chinese Taoists, the Buddhists, uh, India, when I see the, saw the Buddhists in India, they all hint, some more explain it more than others, but they talk about the ancient ones, the ancient civilization, that once upon a time we were one civilization, we were one uh, uh, place while on the earth you go beyond that well you know the, the universe the Tao, you know everything is one anyway but there was one civilization and one civilization the ancient ones knew about the ancient laws and all the attraction um and all the other laws as well and they also knew that they it was said that they were their natural lifespan was 250 years and they were far more in tuned with earth and the universe so there is this the, you know the, the laws of attraction are a span back you know to the beginning of time the, and like I say within science you know when people say oh well it's it's poo poo try to poo poo it because of science I'm a scientist I'm a bit of a science geek I love science I love quantum physics and when you've got quantum physics saying the same thing that was taught by these by these spiritual and philosophical mentors um, thousands of years ago and the ancient ones, when they're saying the same thing, you have to actually start paying attention. Now, yep, you can still have disbelievers out there. And, and if you want to, like, if you want to, you know, disbelieve, and that's, you know, I, I don't care what you say, then that's your, that's your belief. You're believing that. That is what you believe and what you believe is true. But when you have science saying but blind case studies and and in quantum physics they were showing that the observer affects the reality when you have and you can look this up when you have the fbi doing experiments 
and we talked about this last week in the show and we've talked about this before the the uh, fbi did experiments where they got from a couple of hundred to 2000 was the most they ever did um, of people into one place they got i think it was f the first time was or one of the times was washington state round about the late 90s i think it was they got uh, a thousand people into hotels in um in washington state and again like a blind case study they just put it up as a spiritual weekend and they had people focusing on meditation and they that's all they told them to do and those thousand people focused on meditation for a whole weekend and dropped the crime rate by 25 percent for no other reason no other logical reason could be found now you know I always say when people say, "Oh, well, you know, wow, my my more thing that interests me most is not only why did the FBI do that, but also that's not the first time they did it because they would have built up to that. The FBI are site or they work on systems, so they started off small and built up. So you have people out there, scientists, people. If you were very much in the black and white world, you know, the, the people that you are, you know, I believe in science, I believe in this. These people know it exists. In business, there are people who know that this stuff exists and they use it. It's almost their, their secret, you know, their little tool. And there are what, you know, the things around it. Your mind is a very powerful thing. You are your own creator. If you put blockages in the way, you will block it you will block it you will slow it down you will stop it so you know when when you know like like for some people uh, you know like being rich oh you know it's bad to be rich it's it's evil it's bad money is a form of currency um and therefore it's energy that's why we call it currency money helps you do things it's it's a little bit like a car a car can take you to a destination and a car can run somebody over it's it's how you use it determines that point so it's not the car itself that's dangerous just like a gun itself is not dangerous it's the person using it that's dangerous money is not evil it's the person using it that determines what you do with it so important thing is, is when you're manifest manifesting what you want is having your attention set having it something you're passionate about and always always giving yourself space to observe not just totally focus on the one thing and always giving yourself opportunity to clear blockages so yeah. that's what i would that lines in to yeah, no, that's brilliant. So just adding on what you're saying, Paul, um, one of the things that I've come across through my work and even just speaking to friends um, about the law of attraction and manifesting is um, when people talk about attracting money, um, a lot of people say, hey, you know, I want a lot of, I want quite a lot of money or I manifest a million pounds. Um, and I'll be like, okay, why? Why do you want that? Um, and they'll be like, so I just, I want to be free, you know, I want to have more freedom. Now, the energy of freedom is the different to the energy of money. They're two different energies. So if you're trying to manifest and look at, you know, generating or attracting more money into your life for freedom, you're actually blocking money from coming to you because the energy of money is its own energy. Um, so if you are to really be grateful for the fact that you are free, you have the energy of freedom, you're born free, you're going through life free, um, we have free will. So, and I think what's happened in the modern world is a lot of people have given their free will away and they've given their power of choice away to whatever authority that is, it can be your partner, it can be your employer, um, yeah, so to actually honour that you have freedom without money, you know, actually accesses that inner happiness because there is that saying money doesn't buy you happiness. Um, and I really do think just being grateful for being knowing that you're free, knowing that you have free will, knowing that you can actually make 
the choices you want to make in your life, um, it doesn't have to be dependent on money. If you really detach yourself from feeling like you needed money for everything and made a choice to, okay, you don't have to know how to do everything, but if you made a choice to, for example, start a business, example, if you want to start a business and you don't have much startup money, you, it is still possible to start a business. I mean, there's so many entrepreneurs out there that have, you know, are millionaires and they started from very little or they started in college and they've just got their laptop and they're on a student loan. So I would say honor the energy of freedom and that you have that as you're born with that. You are free. Um, just doesn't matter what your circumstances are. Um, honor your free will and acknowledge and be grateful for the fact that you do have choice in your life. Even if you feel like you've given that free will, or the power of your own choices away to somebody else, for example, yeah, it could be your parents, it could be your partner, it could be your employer, acknowledge that you've given it away and take it back, give it back to yourself to make those choices that you want. Then when it comes to focusing on money, money is not so much blocked. I mean, I think it's a really good example. What Paul has highlighted is that money is a vehicle um, and it can get you from A to B. Um, I was talking to some friends on Saturday about this and I said, you know, money for me, actually, I see it as it gives you variety in the physical world. I wouldn't say it would give me more choice or more freedom because of the examples I've just highlighted, but it definitely gives you more variety in the physical world to have different experiences and I do believe at soul level we're, we're here to we naturally yearn for different experiences we yearn for contrast and experiences and, or, and money yeah, is a way to um, is a way to have that I have it's not the only way it's not, it's not, not the, the only way, way. No, it's not the only way I'm not saying it's the only way no, no. but I'm just no. you know we're using money as the example we can yeah. use a different we can use a different example, but yeah, it's all yeah. attractive. No, it's, no, no, it's the one most uh, people uh, are interested in for now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, but, we're still, but, we're still but, trying to wing Chris over on this debate. You know? <laughs> I don't think you have to win him, but um, <laughs> no, like you're saying, the, the reason I say that is not that I have anything against money, um, but it is what you said about um, in with NLP, neuro linguistic programming. You know. Why do you want that million pounds? Because I want to be free. So why not focus on freedom rather than money? Why? Well, because m money is actually more of a narrow uh, probability factor than actually freedom. Because you could get that freedom without necessarily needing the million pounds. You could have, you could get that freedom through other people. You get that freedom through, you find that freedom through your hobbies. You find meditation. Through <laughs> meditation. Exactly. They're, that freedom you seek is a far bigger thing, a far easier thing than necessarily money. So like we said about, you know, you know, we said about, you know, oh, I want, so, you know, you want a, a, a ducky. Well, you know, uh, so Chris wants a, uh, wants the, the duck. Well, that could happen tomorrow. A duck could fly past and sit in his garden. Um, you know, you could have a duck sitting on the shelf. You you could have a picture of a, uh, a duck come up on the TV. The, the probability of that is easy. You know I'm going to freak out now if a duck turns up tomorrow, <laughs> right? No, no, it won't be one duck. It'll be millions of ducks. You've been boggified. It'll be billions of you know, ducks everywhere. Duck soup. But when you start narrowing the field down, and, and this is when they did the case studies on luck, which they only did 10 years ago, um, and they found that luck is all about prob probability. So a lucky person, if you want to be lucky, the more people you talk to and the more you smile at people, the more that people respond in a positive manner and the more opportunities that will happen because of that attitude. So all you did was smile and talk to as many people as possible and your fields open up, your probability opens up. But when you narrow the probabilities, the, the um, when you narrow what you want, the probability factor increases. So when you say, I want a golden ducky made of solid, solid gold with green eyes, blue feathers, <laughs> yes, floats in the bath and says, I am the questioner's duck. 
then the, the probability factor has narrowed down. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It doesn't mean because eventually the whole thing of the other thing of probability is as long as you keep constant, you keep going, it will never stop. Is that, you know, it is um, uh, the, the Irish have a great saying of um, a broken clock is right twice a day. So that means if you keep going and keep on your quest, whatever your quest is, sooner or later, you'll get it. Proof, you want proof? Uh, Einstein didn't, didn't actually, uh, uh, didn't, wasn't uh, known for his a, uh, M equals, E equals MC squared. I think he was 40, 47 when that came out. Dyson, who, for those in America, Dyson is a Hoover company. Um, he had his first Hoover. He had 40 fails before 40. I think it's 50 fails before he actually had his success. Um, Starbucks, the person who created Starbucks. Again, they were originally told a coffee shop will never succeed. It's, 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 a, it's a stupid idea. It will never work. <laughs> who, who knew? Um, J.K. Rowling. 50 uh, uh, attempts with her book before she finally got somebody to uh, release and they only released it originally they only released I think it was a thousand copies and um, because they said that the book was too too adult for kids uh, um, uh, oh KFC um, Colonel Sanders 97 I think he was 96 97 he was hardship. retired definitely yeah. he was definitely retired he was, he, was, he was over the 90, I know that. I'm pretty sure he's 96, 97. Um, close to, he actually tried to commit suicide all the way, had hardships all through his life, and with his last couple of dollars, or last dollar I think it was, he bought the ingredients and he is what he is today. You want to find people that got through the hardships, I can throw hundreds of those at you. Yeah. They are there. And, it's and all also... About yeah so yeah so obviously what you want you actually come up against what we call the energy of resistance so all those examples that paul's highlighted you you actually a resistance comes into your life you can experience negativity from other people or from the outside world however that resistance is a momentum that's building up for the cork to burst and for mm -hmm. you to break through into that you know jk rowling is uh, well, she was a billionaire. She recently gave up billionaire status um, to give her billionaire status away to charity. So she's a millionaire now. But, yeah, she did break through that. Um, and, you know, she had that heartfelt desire for her idea, for her book. She was really poor, um, but she didn't give up. And I think, that you know, it's great. It's great to not be put off by the physical world or by other people's negativity because that is just all resistant energy that's creating momentum in your life for you to break through onto the other side. Um, life is a contrast. You've got the yin and yang, as Paul has highlighted. Um, so, therefore, you experience the contrast you actually experience what you don't want before you experience what you do want because you're going through that resistance. You know, you're going through. So, I mean, just before the break, I would highlight that anyone who's using law of attraction, my advice to them would be, what are you prepared to let go of in order to receive what you want in your life? And if it is something really big, like a million pounds, what are you willing to let go of? You're going to have to let go of quite a large amount of energy in your life to receive the energy of, for example, a million pounds to come into your life. You have to let go and be a slightly bit of an empty vessel to have it, to receive it. You know, I, I don't think the blocks are giving out the thoughts, giving out the emotions, giving out the intentions. Most of the time people are blocked and actually receiving it and for it to come into your life. You do have to let go of things in your life for that to happen. Indeed, very much so. So, as as the uh, lovely Sipi uh, Choi said, we are coming up to the end of part one. And so we've, we've in essence, we've talked about, you know, the, the, the roots of what the law, uh, the law of abundance is and the Look. secret and for now this is the end of part one uh, for those on podcasts 
Uh, for those live, don't go anywhere. We, we, we're, we're still here. But for for those on podcast, <laughs> yeah, please send in your questions. We're here waiting for your questions. So for those on uh, the podcast, part one, hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you again soon. Love, Chi and Jen from Chris and the lovely Sharon. Bye for Thank now. You. Take care. Bye-bye. And that's a break. So that's your gap, Chris. And then we'll uh, kick off again in five, four. Okay. Three, oh, right, game. Yeah. 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 That's just part one, girl. Yeah. That's part one. I've got a cup of tea. I've really got time. Yeah, Hello. Can I go and get some honey? My throat is. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I'll get some honey. Okay. <laughs> So, so any viewers on YouTube, don't worry, it's all falling apart, but it's all good. We're we're just having a little interval. We're having a little break. Um, Sharon, our new co-host, uh, Sifu Shui, is just off to uh, get some honey for her friend, uh, and we'll be we'll be starting it again very shortly. If you have any questions, please you can message us on either YouTube on the live uh, the live feed on YouTube. You can also message us, but I better actually set that up now. Now I'm going to say, you can also message us on the fan page. We have a fan page on Facebook, The Way of Conscious Mindfulness. And you can message us on there. And if you, well, actually, you won't, you won't hear this if you're on podcast because this will be cut out. So... <laughs> So, so have you got any questions already building up, Chris? Has that sort of answered anything for you? Um, yeah, I've, I've got a few questions. Um, uh, there, there's things around the case studies, energy resistance, uh, opening your heart and emotions. Um, staying sent. How do you stay centered in an emotion when things are happening in your life that are trying to drag you away from that emotion? Few, that I've one. got a few like questions. That. I've got a few. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just one or two. Just for two. well, you. Are, this is normal. This is this is the <laughs> this is the Chris. This is the Chris I know and love. Um, it's all good. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, really, okay. really good question. Yeah, shall I go? Um, right. Let, let's, let's start it back off first. Let's. Uh, we. Uh, let me just have a look. Oh, sorry. Back. I thought it was live. Oh, we are it live. Is live. We are live. Oh. <laughs> but but also, we, we we then we now edit this into two parts for, okay. for the, our audience. Uh, podcast audience as well. Okay. So don't worry, guys. We're starting back in five, four. Hi, Sifu Boggy here once again, and welcome to the way of uh, law of attraction and the secret part two. So for the guys um, on podcast, hope you enjoyed part one. If you just found this. Go back to part one first. Listen to that first. Then this will make far more sense. But on part two, so part two, we're going to delve deeper. We're going to go into a little bit more of the nitty gritty. So we've talked about what the law of attraction is. We've talked about a few things about, you know, um, where it comes from, the, the book, but there's actually information there that goes further back. We even sort of mentioned a bit about case studies. So now we're going to delve a little bit deeper into that. So I'd like to bring back and welcome yet again, firstly, Chris, a.k.a. the questioner. Hello. Welcome back to the lovely, the very lovely uh, Sifu Shui or Sharon. Good evening. Hi, guys. <laughs> right, okay, so... Um, Right, okay, so Chris, you had a question. Yes, it's a sort of a double, triple, or single question. I can't quite decide which. Um, so there was something you were saying about opening your heart and being open to your emotions earlier. And I was, I was kind of wondering um, how you stay centered in an emotion 
when things in the world are constantly affecting your state of emotion, like from the simple fact that your coffee might not taste very nice in the morning when you drink it from the coffee shop to having an enjoyable lunch is the other way around. You have a lunch that's very tasty, very nice. These are all going to change and shift your, your emotional state. So how do you stay centered with the emotional vibe, the emotional frequency, I think it was, yes. that attracts the thing that you want into your life? I think that's a really brilliant question. Um, so, yeah, I guess it depends on where that emotion um, <clears throat> that that it displeases you is coming from. If it's coming from, for example, you said having coffee in the morning, that's not right, then you know it's coming from a physical source. To having not the right lunch, okay, so you've made a bad choice of where you had lunch or you haven't cooked it properly if you made yourself lunch. Um, if you, it's coming from inside of you, if you've got um, an emotional, um, emotional feeling, I mean, we all feel all the time, obviously, <laughs> we're all people, we're all human, um, and yeah, we can't feel happy thoughts all the time, I mean, we have to balance ourselves out, and also I think, uh, you know, allowing yourself to not feel good when you don't feel good, and exploring that is really um, one of the first steps to emotional healing, or to emotional awareness, um, so if you have got an emotion or a feeling that's come up and you don't feel happy with it and you, and maybe it's closes your heart and you, you know you want to say your heart you want your heart to be open it's a massive energy center the heart chakra um it depends on i would say depends on what you feel comfortable with there are a few different things you can do um personally i meditate and for me when i meditate visualizing um, is important. It really does have an effect on my emotional well-being. Um, it just depends on really get in touch with what kind of person are you like. Do you like to write? Write in in a journal. A lot of people are like, mm, okay, I'm not going to write a diary. You know, what am I going to write a diary for? What I'm going to write? I'm going to write what I ate every day. You know, some people really don't get that. And I used to be like that. I used to be like, I'm not writing a diary. Why would I do that? Like. That's just going to be silly. But when I did actually start journaling and writing in my notepads, um, I, w I started writing about my emotions and how I felt. And for me, that technique was really, really good. And I still do it now because writing and actually having a conversation with that, for example, that feeling that's come up that doesn't make you feel good or you maybe feel like it's an emotional block, really actually keeps you present it keeps you in that present state where your conscious mind is locked into the act of writing so where your conscious physical mind's busy focusing on right brilliant you've given me something to do i'm going to write now it releases your subconscious mind and as your subconscious mind opens up your subconscious mind really what it has in it is very much attached to your connected to your emotions and your feelings we have things called subconscious beliefs um, and they are connected to your emotions so when when I write the conscious mind gets locked into the physical act of writing but the subconscious mind is freed up and it comes forward and it flows to me and I'm writing um, that type of information and I, I'm writing about my feelings and in that moment, you're just very present and also allow yourself to feel um, if it's a, a, a non-satisfying feeling, it feels negative. Allow yourself to feel it for you to release it. Um, you have a choice. You can, you can hold on to it and you can jump into it and make it a drama, which is very fair and ego-based, ego which... I'm not judging anyone. I've done that. I did it all through my 20s. I didn't know the difference. Brilliant. That's Qigong meditation coming up. Um, but so, um, or you can feel it to release it and go, I can let this go now. I felt it. I've acknowledged it. I've, I've wrote down and explored in my subconscious mind or within myself. You know, I asked my heart. 
sometimes it's not really your subconscious mind you can ask your heart okay heart what are you trying to tell me what is my truth what do i really really want and why do i feel this negativity and it really does flow through from pen to paper and um, there's a famous quote saying the pen is mightier than the sword and i really do feel that's that's so true and, and really staying present. So it can be as simple as staying present and allowing yourself to feel the emotion for you to release it. Um, and that can be done through meditation or if you don't meditate, it can just, you can just do that anyway. Or um, yeah, my personal favorite is writing it down, pen, pen to paper, stay present, get it out, yeah. Any, any, anything. <laughs> I just wanted to That's add right there, 101 guys. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. And anything technically, meditation, meditation simply means focusing on one thing and forgetting everything else. So anything is a meditation. You know, writing is, a, is well, writing it links into other things as well, but anything technically can be meditation. So people who love going fishing. Um, people who even like people who love sitting there and having a pint, and they say, "I don't want to," you know, you know, the, the ones that say, "No, I just want to sit here and drink my pint." Um, you're technically meditating. So you're just focusing on that moment. You're focusing very zen. You're focusing on one thing and letting everything else go. Um, but yeah, technically that's a meditation, and it allows. And the thing with writing, it allows you. You'll start to draw up. The jing, so it draws up your emotions, but it can also draw up your inspirations, your shed. So yeah, th this is why you know the the idea of writing things down is is a good thing, um, and it's a, it's a great tool. It's a great power tool. And there is, there is one thing I would say because I'm coming from a very healing place, like water alchemy. Um, I've been working the public for eight years. Um, I'm an emotional intuitive, so I do readings through emotional intuitive skills and i also do reiki healing spiritual healing it's it's all very energy it's, it's working with metaphysics um working with people in their inner child in adolescent which is basically emotional healing emotional release so my answer is always going to be right let's feel it to heal it that's my motto however there is there are people out there that may not want to dive in and feel stuff um so there is another way and the other way if you really don't not ready to do that kind of work you don't have to i mean there are no right or wrongs if that's not your preference i would say focus your attention on something that makes you feel good you know so rather you know okay you don't feel good and you don't know why okay but you must know yourself well enough to know what to think or to focus on that will make you feel good. And that's what you call redirection. You're redirecting your attention and bringing in that good feeling from a different subject. Now, I'm not saying those bad feelings won't disappear. I don't believe, I think feelings are a communication of the soul through your heart, through your, through your feelings, through your emotions. Um, and so, yeah, if it's attached to a subconscious belief, those feelings will come back. Or if you go back to maybe focusing on something negative or just you, sometimes we don't even know when we're uh, negative. can be caught up in the subconscious. So sometimes we're not even aware that we're being negative until you actually feel it. And that's, you know, coming out in a physical form, because when you can feel it through your physical body it is to some degree it is slightly physical. Um, so yeah, redirection, redirecting your focus, and some people just go on to, to carry on focusing on on what they want all the time to make themselves feel good. But if you do want to really, I I'm a big believer on addressing the root of something rather than nurturing the symptom of it. So redirection is good, but I would say balance that out with actually addressing the root of that feeling that doesn't feel good and yeah meditation and writings Paul's doing a cheek on meditation for us as we speak is definitely is good and also physical exercise is you just can't go wrong with physical exercise swimming I love dancing I've been doing dancing for nine years <laughs> sometimes you know I felt I felt low and I've just got up and I've just 
done a jam in my in my home <laughs> and I'm putting on my favorite music and you can feel a bit stupid. You're like, okay, I'm dancing and I really don't feel good. But it has really got me up. Um, very very quickly because it releases those endomorphins and you're actually showing the universe and showing your body yeah I'm, I'm willing to even though I don't feel good I'm willing to take action to put myself in a place and a space with myself that will make me feel good so I'm telling myself I'm putting the effort in to make myself feel good and it really releases to make you feel good through the exercise that that will happen through dance that will happen through swimming that will happen through tai chi qing gong any kind of exercise that you really love um that, because you're connected to it emotionally um yeah, yeah. It, it distracts, or it distracts. Uh, there's very much in the, in the Buddhist and the Taoist sort of concept of monkey mind, the ego, and you know your you mind, you know your the ten thousand thoughts that you think and you're distracted by, and the, and you know they can be positive and they can be negative, um, but but the, the whole point of exercise, especially physical, you know, qigong's going to a different category, qigong and tai chi, because they are partly physical, they're also meditational, um, and the, the, they're also spiritual. Uh, and and med well, you they all work on mind, body, and spirit, but very much physical exercises. So, like, yeah, dancing the whole point of dancing is you're so engrossed in the dancing, your monkey mind is distracted by what you're doing, so you start letting things go, you start releasing, uh, and that's the important thing. That's why dancing, well, you've not the the conscious mind, that physical mind, you've locked it in and it's like, okay, I'm focusing on the activity. And like you said, everything else gets released because you've opened up the subconscious, you've opened up your feelings, you're feeling a lot through that movement. But yeah, like you said, cool. And, and did, you, did you actually know that uh, in Chinese, the word Kung Fu, so like a lot of people say, ah, oh, Kung Fu, and they think of martial arts. Kung Fu actually means sporting activity. So when you're dancing, you're doing Kung Fu. You're a Kung Fu master. Brilliant. <laughs> you are a Kung Fu master. I'm a dancing ninja and I didn't know it. <laughs> Brilliant. All, all this time, you've been Kung fu in in your, in your uh, room and you didn't eat it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And um, does that answer your question, Chris? I think so, yes. Very comprehensive <laughs> answer. So just for some feedback, which out of those um, options or answers would you pick personally if you came up with a, an emotional feeling that, that was displeasing or felt negative for you or felt like a block? Um, I don't know. I mean, it is something I am thinking about at the moment is trying to figure out how to deal with emotions because it's very easy to uh, get on the emotion train. It then runs away and, and you've gone six stops past your station and, uh, you know, you then need to catch the train back the other way. Um, yeah. The best analogy I can come up with. Yeah. Um, I would say so. Yeah, so I think I, th I think really at the moment it, it's it's acknowledging emotions is what I'm trying to work on and and trying to um, trying to think about uh, my emotions. Now I'm not doing a written one because I, I I do find that writing is quite slow for me, so I'm doing an audio log instead. Yeah, that, that's why because of my dyslexia, writing is not my my favourite my favorite friend it's a seafood but it's not one of my favorite friends uh but yeah i've always done audio but i've always done um audio i actually well, a billion years ago when i was at school is that i actually persuaded my teachers to allow me to do a lot of audio stuff and that's what kicked me off with yeah. doing the diet when i was a kid i did audio audio versions audio books but yeah it doesn't matter how you do it yeah the spoken word is just as powerful as the written word if not more powerful I mean, the spoken mm -hmm. word has sound. Sound yep. um, actually creates form. So you yep. speaking and emotion. The emotion is brilliant. I mean, it's it's really it's definitely releasing through through that element of air mm. comes out of your mouth. But yep. I mean, recording it, yeah, I think that's very admirable and um, insightful. 
Yeah, I, I, I tend to find as well that, you know, you could just, as you go along through the day, just thinking, oh, you just have a thought or something. You can just hit record, boom, it's there with you. You record your, your little log and, you know, it takes you a few seconds and then you can just keep adding to it over the day. And Whereas that's with, with, the, with the diary, you, you got, it's like, yeah, going to carry that around with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm such a yeah. spy. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm a scribe in a past life, but I just love to write and yeah. I probably, talking is actually, yeah, second option. So, yeah. That, um, that's, the <laughs> that, that's the thing for some funny, people funny. <laughs> writing writing in a diary or writing is, is a great passion they they love um well for you and me you know um you know it's not i would i can i can talk i can talk the hind legs off a donkey i persuade to go for a walk afterwards write what? write a letter to the donkey i'd be uh, the the donkey would have grown a new pair of legs before the time i finished the letter to it so <laughs> Um, so it's why you've got your own radio show. <laughs> Perfect. Well, well, this is the other thing you'll find a lot of YouTubers are doing. YouTubers in in originally a lot of the YouTubers were just doing audio diaries. They're putting yeah. their emotions out there. I yeah. mean, putting putting it out for the world to see is a very brave thing because no, it's um, amazing. Yeah, and everyone's benefiting uh, from that. I mean, I've got my favourite people. I I check up on YouTube, and it's it's great. Um, I mean, coming back to your question, Chris, especially for anyone, any all of our viewers who feel they have monkey mind and they want to get in touch with their emotions, uh, one of the most profound things that happened to me um, on my path of personal development and self-discovery was reading the, the book, The Power of Now, and that's by Eckhart Tolle. Now, when you hear the title, you think, okay, the power of now, maybe that's just going to be about being present or being present and at one with yourself. But when I read the book, it was really amazing to read that the author, Eckhart Tolle, actually went through this a real transition in his life where the book's really focusing on how he let go of his physical mind and came down into his heart and it was he actually had a breakdown in his life for him to actually let go of the mind that physical mind he had an, what you call an ego death um we have ego deaths if our heart gets broken in a relationship and i think as human beings so it depends how old you are i mean i've had my heart broken twice um <laughs> in my life so far but the point is is that our heartbreak is an ego death because that attachment to that person is really attachment is fear-based so you know a lot of us who are controlled by the physical mind it is attached to the ego and the ego does just work and coincide with fear I'm not saying ego is bad but I'm just saying that you can make a transition to let go of your physical mind as I told told it and come down into your heart now I did do that transition, but I was really inspired by his story, so I set the intention to do that. And what I experienced was, I didn't really have a big breakdown like he did. I mean, he really went for it. I mean, he was homeless. He was, you know, he lost, he felt like he'd lost his mind. And in a way, he was out of his mind for that spiritual journey. But he came down to his heart and he found himself sitting on a park bench for three months, just laughing and being in total bliss um that didn't happen to me <laughs> and it was a shorter transition but i really did come out of that physical mind i came down into my heart as i intended um and really when i speak and think i i really do feel that it's coming from my heart i really feel that energy and most of the time my actual physical mind is quite very still I don't have monkey mind. Um, I'm not saying I'm perfect just because I don't have monkey mind, but what I'm saying is I really do, I'm living through my heart, I'm speaking through it. I really think through it as well. I think if my mind confuses me or I, I feel too mental, I really do close my eyes and ask my heart, okay, heart, what are you trying to tell me? What is I really want? Because what I found with the heart, for example, if you make a to-do list, 
just thinking I would make a to-do list and I would have 20 things on that to-do list and there's no way I could do that in a day but when you put your hands on your heart and you ask your heart okay what is my to-do list for today I want to know my truth today what do you really want to do you would not write down no more than four or five things to do because the heart is very truthful it's a very profound energy center it understands that you're living in the physical reality and it knows what is what is accomplishable in in the time that you have um for a day so what i would say is that the mind would really try and exhaust you and make you think you can do so many things and and you know because it can think so quickly it's not really taking into consideration that physical matter of actually doing the physical work which is a lot slower um but the heart i find when you ask it it really does only give you what you can manage so i, I find it's a very truthful center to come down into um i wouldn't say that coming down to your heart you don't have any negative feelings you do but i working through them from your heart center is um is i would say quite a healing process you really get to the root of the issue and you get to truths as opposed to your mind distorting those truths or those feelings or yeah yeah sure. it's a massive subject but mm. i hope <laughs> that helps <laughs> and, and, and again there's still you know finding you know finding your way in is there are many different ways. Well, you know, what worked for uh, Eckhart Tolle and worked work for even like you said, you know, you your experience of it was different to his. And yeah. this is this is the key. There, are, you know, <clears throat> there is no one Tao. There is no one way. Yeah. There is no yeah. one path. We're all freaking different. We're all different. We're all yeah. meant to be different. That's the whole point. So you have to find your way. You know, the, yeah. as a Taoist, that's the point. My Tao is different to. Dao, which is different to his seafood's baz, his Dao, and so on and so forth. But they're all the Dao, they're all the way, they're your way. And it's finding the way that works best for you. And the way is about balance. So it's, you know, li listening, finding a way to to firstly recognize so you like you say recognize the monkey mind so you, in buddhist thought taoist thought you have monkey you have monkey mind and buddhist thought or monkey mind and taoist thought and taoist thought is the voice that whispers it's that little intuition and in, you know that you really have to be quiet to hear and quiet one of the ways to gain that quietness to hear your intuition is through a form of meditation um and and the where you said you know like because you said like whenever I, I think i'm confused i listen to my heart where well, the confusion is actually what the taoist would call the monkey mind it's that it's it's trying to get, get you all over the place because the monkey is one minute it's here then it's over here and it it's it ego it likes to play it likes to yeah. keep you running around in circles now, yeah taoistically, um, yeah, to gain clarity, you know, when I say, you know, not sure, I wouldn't say I really don't have much of a monkey mind, but like gaining clarity, I mean, that's, you know, real heartfelt thing to do. And I mean, a lot of the time people do struggle with the clarity of what they want or the clarity of what's the next best action step to take towards what you want. Um, and so, yeah, that's when you yeah, asking your heart's good. But I mean, I highlighted my experience and the book, The Power of Now. To not, it's not prescriptive. Of course, everyone's path is different. We're all unique. But it's just to highlight that. Know when you're led by your mind, and we, and to highlight the difference between being led by your heart is very different feeling to being led by your mind, and that you can actually let go of one to really be more in the other um if that makes any sense yeah as bruce lee once said it's like a finger pointing towards the moon do not watch the finger or you'll miss that heavenly glory yeah so the, and the finger <laughs> is a way it's not the way that's the point yeah absolutely so you know we're talking about getting in touch with our emotions and so yeah i've highlighted that coming down to your heart space and um some people if you feel like you've got monkey mind you can't come down to your heart space it is possible to really let go of that 
In the same way, um, people who are intuitive or who do psychic readings, you're actually collapsing that physical mind to access your higher mind, to access that intuition that comes through for other people or yourself. So there's there you don't we don't just do it. It's not just a transition of letting go of your mind. You can have an ego death to come into your heart. You can do it when you actually just collapse the or let go of the physical mind, so you you're not so into it in order for your and intuition from your higher self or your higher mind to come through. So yeah, you, you do it in more than one ways, and you probably yeah. do it very. We all do it very naturally. We just some are more aware of it than others. Yeah. Now, there is a or one one of the other techniques another good technique also good for clearing so we're talking about i just want to quickly say about blockages about you know blockages and monkey mind is that Taoist for me Taoistically, and some top, some people some of the haters get very upset about this is that Taoistically, there is no good or bad there just is if if, if, the, if the universe is the matrix if the universe is a tool for you to experience for you to grow then everything that happens is an experience whether it's good things or bad things they are still an experience how you treat that experience makes it your perception of it makes it good or bad but everything is an experience so when something happens like the, the reason i say this is that monkey mind is not in Taoism, monkey mind isn't considered a bad thing. Monkey mind, just like everything else, is considered your sifu, is your muse. So when when you're distracted, it's, okay, why am I distracted? You know, like, getting yourself back to your heart is good, but why am I also being distracted? What's distracting me? What, what yeah. is it? And ask, like you say, you ask your heart, what, you know, what I need to do. Ask the monkey mind, you know, why are you distracting me? But what's popping up? So, so it says, uh, uh, paying the bills. The bills. Why? Why? Because the is it security? Is it just that it's something that needs to be present? You need to okay, pay that bill, and then it's gone, done. Yeah. So the whole yeah. point of monkey mind is everything, everyone, and everything is your seafood. Same with monkey. Yeah. So bad things that happen are not really bad. This is why I. This is why. Michelle, who's not unfortunately not here today, but me and Michelle say we love haters because they highlight things. You know, they highlight something and it's like, okay, how can I to myself and the universe, because the universe is me and I am the universe in Buddhism and Taoism, even going to Christianity and other religions, they talk that eventually all is one, all is God. You are yeah. God. And so why, you know, how do I express to myself? this point of view what is this point of view trying to teach me what am i that so those hindrances because you speak to even jk rowling all those failures and um uh i think i well um edison who created the light bulb um had fifteen thousand failures to make a light bulb and they asked him the question why you know how does it feel because they want to focus on the negative how does it feel to have fifteen thousand failures before you made a light bulb and he's and his answer was i didn't have fifteen thousand failures i had fifteen thousand ways not to make a light bulb i only needed to find one to make a light bulb it's changing the point of view seeing not your negatives as negative but seeing them as seafoods seeing them as yeah, yeah and he's still the inventor of the light bulb no one can take that away from him despite how many tries as you said it's and Paul, what you highlighted, especially with the monkey mind, um, is you know it's really powerful actually because highlight putting your the light of your consciousness, whether that's on your confusing thoughts, monkey mind, actually putting the light of your consciousness on that and asking it, hey, what are you telling me? Or putting the light of your consciousness on that emotion that doesn't that just feels negative, and going, hey, feeling, why are you actually telling me that? really that is the key to enlightenment I, I believe it is the key to healing it is the key to really all your answers <laughs> so yeah the light of your own consciousness and acknowledging consciousness is that awareness that really focusing and being present asking giving whatever is distracting you your full a loving attention um as, as an observer so not jumping into that that kind of drama you know that's a real act of self-love 
so it's really powerful and that's 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 brilliant go Paul <laughs> can't wait for some more lessons <laughs> <laughs> Chris do you have another question yes a lot of what we've talked about tonight or you guys and girls have talked about is um, very much psychology based it's how you perceive the world whether you perceive things as negative or positive or being open to the opportunities before you um, I'm trying to think how to phrase this into a question I'm just trying to talk it out here so it, it's very much about your 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 mental state your mental your mental picture or canvas of what the world is and and what how how you perceive perceive it um so does psychology play a part in the law of attraction so for example not being open to i think you said it best earlier it's not being open to the possibilities around you because you're so focused in being so negative that everything sucks so i don't know my coffee tastes crap um, you're so busy worrying about your coffee tasting crap that you miss a friend that's across the bar and you could have bumped into them and talked to them and yeah. opened up another possibility, let's say. But it's psychology. Or there might have been five pounds on the floor that you completely missed that, you know, you might have found. But, um, um, you know, well, for me, yes, but or it's all. You know, like, in the West, we have this tendency of, like, we like to put things in boxes. So, oh, oh, it's psychology, or it's philosophy, or it's this. But Taoistically, and you know I use that a billion times, that word, but it's it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing, is that who you are creates the reality you have. So if you're yes. a positive person, your yes. life will eventually become more positive. You know, time is an illusion. You know, where it happens tomorrow or whether it happens three years down the, the, the time, that's technically the illusion because, it. you know, if you allow is when you're waiting for – there's there's a uh, uh, one of the things a lot of um i'll, I'll add on something Go as on. well no, okay. okay so basically paul said um you, who you are he he highlighted you know you create your reality based on who you are and i would like to say that anyone looking at um engaging in law of attraction i mean we all we all are doing that anyway we're on autopilot <laughs> whether you want to do it consciously or not um you actually do attract what you are um at a, a vibrational level as well as attracting what you want so if you do want something for example a million pounds are going to keep with the example but you're not vibrating at that frequency of of a, a million pounds i mean i I don't know, one day we might be able to measure the different kinds of money that we want to attract with frequency. Um, but the point is, is that you will attract what you want. I mean, a lot of people, you can see this in partnerships, when people want to attract a soulmate. And so they want this person who's up here, but really they are with themselves at this level. So, you know, people sort of wanting this soulmate that's here and they're here. You know, you're not really i'm not saying you won't attract what you want but because you attract what you are as well as what you want the universe is going to bring you someone into your life who is what you want but actually on the same frequency as as where you are so you may meet someone who ticks some of those boxes those daydream boxes you have of a soulmate whatever they are but you know you're going to meet someone who has possibly the same similar strengths and weaknesses as you or similar lessons that you both need to learn because you're attracted to what you are if that makes any sense or for example if you have an energy about you that's very has a, a poverty mindset or you feel that you're not worthy enough to be wealthy or to have that prosperity and abundance in your life then what you want will manifest but it will manifest at the level you're vibrating at so you might not hit that jack point. It, you know, you have to really start letting go of these negative beliefs of I'm not worthy, letting go of the negative beliefs of I'm not enough, you know, to really start up in the vibration because 
really we're all love energy at the center of us we're actually all high vibrational people um we were born naturally like that and you see that with, with children you know so high vibrational loving in a place of, of innocence where they're just so open to everything um obviously as adults through yeah through life so it's re it's really about what you're willing to let go of to raise your frequency so you can attract what you want but what you want is actually in alignment with who you are and what you are if that makes any sense and obviously less of the fears because you can simultaneously attract what you want at what you are but you will also attract the fears at the level of what you don't want but what you are so as you i've seen people who are very high frequency people they're amazing mentors and healers or life coaches and i've seen them have so much of what they want in their life but because they haven't let go of certain fears or they they have these limiting beliefs with them still they'll have a mirror image of the high the high kind of lifestyle they want but then they will have the contrast of having all the fears or baggage that comes with that so really it's it's looking at what holds you back it's looking at your limitations you need to make both sides of yourself you know strengthen those weaknesses to become the opportunities your strengths will always be your strengths but it's both sides because you can go up but you're still going to have this polarity reality in your life because we are polar people. We, we have polar opposites within ourselves. You can go up and the good can keep getting good and better, but the worst can actually keep getting worse. And this is what people don't understand with attracting and creating your own reality. You are in a polarity in your reality. You have your the hopes, you have your fears, you have what you love, what you want, you have what you fear and what you don't want. So you can go up with it and you're gonna have the biggest contrast as you as we live now. But you know, it can be very, very extreme at, the, at that top. Um, or you can do the work and really come whole. It's really about coming whole with yourself and that really turning those weaknesses or limiting fears or beliefs those emotional blocks, you know, due to whatever holding you back into an opportunity and, and strengthening that. And that means being out of your comfort zone and letting go of a lot of things, you know, letting go of your attachment to, to objects, your attachment to people, because that's all fear-based as well. So it doesn't mean that you're not going to be a loving person if you become unattached to certain things you can be a very loving person because you're able to respond because you're not attached you know when we're attached to things we jump into the drama of it or you can't see the wood for the trees so it, it's not about i'm saying being so detached and we're all going to be you know enlightened on the top of the mountain that's not what that's about it's really about strengthening the weaknesses and detaching yourself so you can give a loving response so you can give more compassion so you can allow that space between you and the situation or you and other people to just flow and trust in the universe whatever comes your way it's the universe is self-correcting and this is what a lot of people don't understand as well is that it, it it's everything's moving around in the cycle so if you allow things to come around full circle it you know and have that positive thoughts and have that compassion for the situations and for yourself really it all starts with yourself you are going to come around full circle yourself and yeah. therefore you will come around full circle in your life again and again and again and as you said the um, um the edison with the light bulb inventing he's going around in circles to see the the invention and in order to get the result and that's really the process we're all doing with ourselves and what we're creating and attracting in our lives the broken clock theory don't give up on the thing you're focusing on but also it, it's that balance of you don't give up on the thing you're focusing on but don't be so rigid that you're only going to narrow your field it can only happen in one way is that you open yourself up and go well this is this is what i want but how can it happen how can you know and play with the idea allowing yeah. other opportunities to come in yeah well, let go of the how let go of the expectation yeah. and just you know love yourself 
through everything, through the whole journey, you know, saying that we want to manifest, let's let's think of a million pounds, let's have it in our reality, oh, I haven't got it into my reality instantly. That's like saying I want to eat all the food that I'm going to eat in my life for the rest of my life mm -hmm. in one meal. So really, we're here for the journey. Surely, if you're on that path to manifest in a million pounds you want to enjoy that journey you're going to want to have it broken down into steps you're going to want to be able to stand back and say if someone asks you how did you do that you're going to be able to go you know what i know exactly how i did it because i just did step by step life showed me and guided me and came to me step by step and i saw myself going up and up and up and you know, it is it is frequency. I do believe um, a very famous quote Bashar said. I'm a very big fan of Bashar's work. I love Circum Bashar. Yeah, I love Bashar. Um, circumstances don't matter. State of being matters. And so, um, when it comes to the law of attraction, if if you focus on what makes you feel good. Because we, we call it raising joy to release fear. When you're doing stuff that makes you feel good, when you're dancing, when you're playing that musical in instrument, when you're writing out, when you're talking on your audio, when you're swimming, when you're really making life a movement process, it actually, you feel joyful, but you're letting go of your fears. You, you can feel joyful and actually laugh and cry at the same time. That is what we call raising joy to release fear. You can be joyful, but actually go, oh my God, I actually feel I'm going down and I'm going up, but that's fine because it's all just coming out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also being mindful that the energy that you're putting back into yourself, it's that self-love. It's having that awareness to be compassionate. Having been compassionate if you are not feeling good one morning, you know, have compassion for yourself. We're not robots. We are sentient mm -hmm. beings. We are human beings. Like, let yourself be messy. Let yourself be imperfect. Yeah. Uh, nature is, we don't walk around the park and go, why are these trees messy? And why are they having leaves on the ground that's messy? We don't judge nature the way we judge ourselves and other people. And I think we really do need to love ourselves through that journey. Whatever your goal is, you know, the, your, the goal is an extension of you. What you want is an extension of you. It's not your whole identity. It's not truly... It, it is a part of you. I mean, and you can get yourself to that vibration where you're attracting what you want and it's what you are as well, then you can say my goals are a representation of who I am and what I am and where I am that, you know, what I am are. But, yeah. Yeah, it's a big journey. Just <laughs> enjoy it as you can. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's all about. And, and the way you, you brought up a point in this whole... For me, one of the things, the three ones. Um, for, for my students who know I'm gonna, uh, I talk about, this will be a bit of an eyebrow moment, but the three ones in, in Taoism is um, unconditional love, yeah. uh, forgiveness, and gratitude. And it's a key to, we're talking about manifesting, it's, a key, it's key to life, but it's a key to manifesting. If you love, if you unconditionally love the idea, you the probability of it happening increases if you forgive yourself when things go wrong when you forgive the universe when it puts blocks in your path you'll you'll uh, the probability of it happening increases when your gratitude for every single thing good or bad for 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 the for the bad times that taught you new tricks and for the good times when it happened you will increase your probability so everything expands when you have the free ones in flow, in perfect flow. Now, one thing I, I just wanted to say about Bashar, I love Bashar. Now, one of the real, my, one of the things that almost yeah. mind trips, one, one of the things about him that mind trips me, or used to, when I was a kid, and I love, is, is the thing that when Bashar talks about manifestation, he talks about that the universe, the universe is multiple. As in quantum physics, the multi-universe. There is this yes. theory of quantum physics that that your 
that basically every reality is happening all at once, all at the same yeah. time. Leave so there, 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 people. <laughs> yeah. so, so there are other shows happening all, all at the same time with um, yeah. either where me and Sharon are having a big argument or, or, or Chris. Why not? Chris, Why or, or, <laughs> yeah, but, and and there's, a, there's a universe where Chris is going, oh my God, it's a golden rubber ducky. <laughs> um, you know, I'm playing with it. Yeah, yeah, the, whole yeah. point, you know, the, the present whole point moment is, is eternity, right? Yeah, and the it's whole point with Bashar. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, no, the whole, no, go on. The whole, no the whole point with Bashar is he says, you are the center point, and you, the, the reality, the, the reality stays the same, and it's you that change. You move from one place to another. Now, there was, um, um, oh, I forgot who. I forgot the, the guy who, Stephen King. Stephen King wrote, wrote this book, which became a movie about time travel. And he did it from a different perspective. Is that, that everybody alive moves forward through different pictures of time. And, um, and yeah. what in, in that movie is that they were stuck in the past and the past was slowly deteriorating and fading away. And then they eventually caught back to the point they found a, a, a hole back into a future and then and then they caught back up with time and what Bashar, Bashar says is the same thing is that we you're the 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 reality where you've got that golden ducky um it already exists it's already there it already exists you've just got to tune your frequency into it so whatever you want the sharp yeah. point of view already yeah. exists it's already yeah. there. So there's, there's like a quantum leap meditation um it's it's mm. out on the market i think it's with mind valley um that you can tune yeah. into and it gives you a technique to meet the self the, the version of yourself that won that million pounds or had that golden duck and you could ask it okay great what can you tell me what i can do in my life right now because i don't have that I'm not the version of you, I don't have what you had, but I'm trying to get there. And um, that that version of you will just give you some kind of guidance or action steps for you to take to really unlock that kind of block or to, to allow that to come into your life more. So that's, that's a quantum leaping kind of strategy, which I was really interested in. I think this was like five years ago, this came out. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, funny, funny enough. enough. That. Funny enough. <laughs> It's a it's a qigong, it's a Chinese qigong. Uh, but, <laughs> okay, yeah, it, it is. It, you know, yeah. But but a lot of the, you know it, again, the universe just repeats itself. The un everything, yeah. you know, the idea that you have, hey, that and the, there's a the psychology behind it. The idea that you have, millions of people have had that idea, but they either thought it's too foolish or they couldn't do it or. So the, uh, the, there's an old saying, the ancient ones say, that the universe gives everybody, every idea they ever conceived, lots of people get it, but only certain people finish, get through the finishing line, get to the, to the end. But, but that doesn't, you know, because all is one, it doesn't matter who gets yeah. there, it's the yeah. idea that gets there. And of course ideas bounce off each other. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for Skull Babylon, Brendan, who did for many years and still does um, a paradigm shift. It wasn't for him. I would have eventually had my butt kicked and, and, and eventually did this show. So everything is yeah. just a shadow of something else. Right, we've got two I'm, questions. I'm, I'm, inter um, I'm, okay. Okay. I'm interested um, just to hear what Chris wants to manifest now that he's he's been here listening to all these things <laughs> from us, these ideas. <laughs> What are you going to manifest, Chris? That's always been my problem. I'm never quite sure what to manifest. It's like there's so many possibilities of things you can manifest. I'm never sort of... <coughs> what do you want to attract more into your life? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Action? What are you... Start small. Always start small. It's, it's usually the practical things like lunch or... <laughs> okay, yeah. Nice lunch. Yeah. yeah. That's all good. Cool. Okay. Right. So, two questions. One, uh, I, I, but for those on the video, um, when you were talking, uh, 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 Shui, uh, Sharon, um, I I started 
laughing. And the reason I was laughing was because of the question, um, which, which, which is, uh, the, the question was, who's Paul? Now, now, what this means is everybody actually knows me as Boggy. It's, it's oh, my sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's my martial art name, it's my super name, and it is quite, I love it sometimes when people call me Paul, and I was waiting to see if anybody reacted, and and I was right, somebody, um, there were people I've known for 25 years who go, Paul, who's Paul? Yeah. Who's Paul? Who's Paul? Okay. Oh, no, 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 it's all good. It's but the boggy boggy means balance out queen chaos and calmness. That's it was the nickname given to me by my seafood. Uh, uh, but anyway, that's for another time. So we did have another question on our uh, fan page group. Uh, yes, uh, from a sad boy. Uh, it doesn't say the boy, surname, yeah. boy from boy. California, very ah. good person. Hi, nice boy. <laughs> right. I, I did ask him to ask or ask them to actually delve a little bit deeper into the question, but their question simply was Can we all work together? Okay, can we all work together? Um, meaning. Exactly, that's why I did ask okay, him to delve fine. a little bit Can we all work together? Well, we're all connected. I know Savoy knows this. He knows we're all connected. <laughs> um, yeah, Savoy's, you know, very soulful person, very spiritual. He's got an amazing kind of understanding of what's going on in the universe. So can we all work together? Yeah, I mean, we're all connected. It depends on what you want to work in relation to law of attraction or manifestation. Um, actually, if you've got a group of people together to focus on one outcome, um, you would attract it quicker because the group energy is that much more powerful than one person by themselves. Yes. Not saying that one person, I'm, I'm quite a loner, so, uh, you know, not saying that you as one person is not powerful, you are, um, but obviously there's multiple energy going around, especially if you're in a circle as well, you stand in a circle, you know, you have the same intention, but you do need to cooperate. And also having a group dynamic is you still have those thought, those hopes and fears with each person. So really, although the plus side is that there's, you know, there's your energies multiplied through having a group of people focusing on one goal or focusing on what you want to manifest into reality i would say be aware of the group dynamic be aware that you are with individuals they all have different subconscious beliefs they all have different fears they all have slightly different wants even if you're agreed on the same goal you know you're going to have different levels of resistance for that goal so i would say i think it would possibly come into reality quicker but at the same time, it's, it's dynamic. You know, it would come in maybe on slightly more dynamic. Um, it would represent the group energy as opposed to just your individual energy manifesting and attracting things um, by yourself. So. Yeah. Yeah. They say, like I said, start small, start with yourself and then, you know, roll it out. But, you know, I know... Savoy does a lot of work. With, he's got friends. He's got groups of people he knows. He's very community-led, I think. So, how can we all work to go? Law of attraction. That, that, that's that's what I'm getting. I can't really think of anything else as to what that question would mean. But mm. yeah, hopefully, we'll be on another show to ask more questions. <laughs> Well, this is the, the, top, the topic. So, what it, actually, the guest shows as well is that sometimes we end up with more questions and not enough time, even though it's been two hours. But it, it's all good. It means you can we, we can talk about this again in the future. Uh, I mean, so, yeah, I would say the same is is that um, it, it's it's two ways. It's two, you know. Yeah, you can, I mean, I think you know, I think actually, because the worst question is there is a deeper meaning to it. If I look at it more broadly, um, I think what's happening in the world is people are really looking at the modern way of life and the effect it's having on the environment. Um, we are, you know, we are kind of destroying our planet, um, which is not good. Um, and we are destroying ourselves as well through different means, through maybe 
pharmaceutical drugs to you've got you know there's there's different theories about chemtrails and all sorts of things so i think really what's coming about is people the collective there's more people that want a healthier earth they want a better natural environment you know they they, they want more trees they they we want more oxygen we, do, we want less chemicals and more natural you know that that's when i put it into simplistic terms so i think you know when it comes to law of attraction and working together um on a larger collective within uh, with people Facebook brings lots of people together and it's across different countries. There will be people that want this better future for themselves, a healthier future that has a healthier mother earth, healthy environment, clean water, um, less of an imbalance with the rich and poor between humanity, you know, human rights that are honored and, you know, not disregarded. So, and I think we're living in a time where it is very, very black and white. It's, it's a big contrast between, you know, corporations and the government and, you know, us destroying our environment to the people actually going, no, we're going to let go of all this, this power and looking for control or money or what have you and focus our attention on, you know, bringing in that new world, that, that new level of consciousness where we see money as energy and we're using the law of attraction to bring it into ourselves, into our life. And it's, it's, encouraging us to do the work on ourselves because we understand that our reality is really a reflection of our reality inside and where we are um and and i think that's that's really powerful i think we should definitely all come together more on a heart set of level to want a better a healthier planet not on a nature level and on a heartfelt human emotional level start really being present with people, start really connecting with the heart, start understanding that we've got feelings and not expecting people to repress them just so they could get through their day or do their work or make money from the job they don't like and actually go, no, let's have more people that want these heartfelt dreams and goals and entrepreneur ideas. Getting that out into the world, I think, really is how we can all work together. And um, moving forward with my work with Water Alchemy, I'm going to be launching <laughs> Divine Talent Academy, which is going to be bringing people in to really focus on what your divine talent is. You know, I believe everyone's got a divine talent, a divine gift that you have nurtured over many lifetimes um, and not necessarily would need any qualifications to do that. You would naturally be talented at it. And to also from... I've been in the copy world, I've got 12 years experience in marketing to really blend water alchemy with um, my marketing skills and to really work with people on how they can go to market with, um, with their divine talent. Because what I see as the bigger picture in the future is p people offering services that are unique to them through the, their unique talent. Um, because that's really going to be the, the biggest network in the future. At the moment, we've got a society that does a lot of the same, so we're kind of breaking out of that and, and coming into these. A lot of these services will be more metaphysical, more based around energy, because we are really transcending from a very physical 3D reality into a fourth density, up to a fifth density reality, which needs more energy aware services or more metaphysically aware services indeed indeed uh, <laughs> I, well, your, show, your show is on the first of the second first of june so we will be talking about that on the first okay, of june. sorry i forgot uh, i registered a clock sorry I know. you went on oh, the right, right, it was your question <laughs> <laughs> um Right, okay, we've got one question. We're, okay. we're coming up to time, but uh, we had a great question from Kat, uh, which yeah. is, um, actually, Chris, do you want to say it? Yeah, sure. Um, Rehumans destroying the planet. Do you think it is possible for the law of attraction to manifest a better way of living? Yes. So who's destroying the planet? Humans. Humans. Your man's. Humans are destroying planet. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, as I said earlier, yeah, I mean, we are doing that. 
you know, we're not doing that because we're evil. People think humanity or parts of being human is evil. We're not. We are all love. We are. And we have got truth and love at the centre of us. Um, it's whether you're going to be the vehicle for fear and that li that's linked to being a vehicle for your ego, being a vehicle for your fear, allowing yourself to be institutionalized where you just give your power away and you're unconscious and you become a vehicle and a puppet to powers that seek that type of agenda. Um, so the, more, the best thing you do is become more conscious because as a conscious being, you become stronger in your free will and in your self-will for yourself. You are less likely to give your own power away. You definitely won't, as you become conscious, want to live an unconscious lifestyle because once you're, you transcend and you transition, you just, you go, we, it's human nature to evolve and want to go forward. We don't really go back on ourselves. So everybody it's all about your consciousness become more aware more conscious with yourself liberate yourself before you liberate the world and you'll see a joining up of people at that consciousness you know you attract new people to your life where you can have these kind of conversations we're all on that level of frequency although we have different understandings of it we understand what we're talking about and what we have been talking about tonight and you know opening that space up so I think you're going to see in the future a bigger divide between the people that are destructive and the people that are creative and really focus on creating that better world and, and being that change within yourself and really walking your talk, you know, really be transparent. What you do behind the scenes should be what you're doing in front of anyone, you know. Yes, yeah, you know, so... There's an old day, that surprise point, there's an old day I say, and it says, the bigger the down, the bigger the up. The bigger the up, the bigger the down. Yes, we, we are in a place of turmoil. Yes, there are problems. But sometimes you need problems to find solutions. And just like, you know, you look at all these, all, you know, J.K. Rowling, all these people had, they had difficulties. They had the blockages. We as humanity right now are have got the blockages. We are doing not great things to the planet. It's up to us to change it. What we've done in the past, we've released our power, we've taken away our power and given it to governments and given it to other societies. Oh, it's up to them. No, it's up to us. Is that if one thing governments know, it's a, it's a classic fact within the CIA and the FBI, is that when the people become one, they can topple a government. And when people come together and say, well, no, actually, we want to find solutions. Because remember, whatever you focus on grows. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on the solution. That's what we need to do is that, you know, we create our own communities, we create our own groups, we create our own um, conscious, uh, conscious um, activist talks, but we find solutions. We already know what the problems are. If, 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 if you've got a cold, yeah, you know you've got a cold, drink vitamin C, do some good qigong, do things that will change that cold, that will help you evolve it. So it's not focusing on the problems, it's focusing on the solutions. Focusing, if you're down, look up. When, we're, we're, you know, it's simple as that. So the bigger the up, the bigger the down. When you're down, look up. Focus the way up. That's what we need to do. But hey, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And lead, lead by example, because we're not here to change anyone but ourselves. So you can't really change anyone, even if you wanted to. And that's that's not you know change yourself. And people do start catching on and going, hang on a minute, how do you do that? Or you know, be the example you want to be in the world, and people will be inspired by that. Um, it's only natural to you know when it's when it comes to. It, when it comes to heart-centered matters, definitely. Indeed. <laughs> okay, right. I think it's time to wrap up. So, um, Chris, have you any uh, last words? Uh, been an interesting show. Um, thank you for uh, being here, Sharon, to uh, be the repost. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed everything that you and Boggy have had to say, so thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, and uh, Shui, 
Uh, Sharon, have you got anything else to say? L last, uh, last things? Um, thank you for having me. And thank you for everyone that's tuned in. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to be able to be here and speak and to know that there's some friends out there that have tuned in or family as well. I think my mum's listening. Hi, mum. Hello. Happy <laughs> day for Sunday. <laughs> so, yeah, no, thanks for having me. And I think your work's amazing. You opened up an amazing space to have this talk. Um, I, I hope you attract definitely more viewers. Um, let's let's make this the radio station of the universe. Make it so. <laughs> okay, right. So uh, I'll just do a little bit of uh, uh, finishing off. So uh, June the first is uh, Sharon's show. She will be yeah. talking about water, uh, uh, alchemy. Water she alchemy. Also, yeah. <laughs> uh, she'll also be talking about being human in a spiritualized world, which sounds pretty cool. Yeah. And possibly a secret project, which I think you've already hinted at. That I've hinted so. at. Oops. <laughs> Lots of secrets now, which is the opposite to what our title was. The secret. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. I don't think anyone heard. It's fine. <laughs> I'll have the website up by then. <laughs> no, yeah, it's so don't know what it is, do we? So, but yeah, anyway, no. that's the first of June. That's a while away. June, Next yeah, summer. Cool. Next week we have uh, Brandy. Cole, uh, she'll tell me off if I've got her name wrong. Uh, and we next week we'll be doing tapping uh, into your potential, unlimited po possibilities for co-creating with nature. So that should be a cool show too. So I like to be chilling in. Indeed. Mm -hmm. So what I like to say is uh, thank you very much, as always, for my co-hosts, and thank you very much to Chris. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you very much to Troy, to Sharon, and <laughs> that is it from us. You, so, hope you're joining the show. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Tune in next week. Take care. Love, Chi and Shen from the way of conscious mindfulness.